All right, welcome back to the show today. We are talking about the Overtime Elite League. What is it? What type of league is this? It is a league slash high school for kids between 16 and 20 who get paid to play basketball. It is sponsored by Overtime. So let's get into what Overtime is. Overtime started out as just like an Instagram account where they would share Zion Williamson dunking or Trey Young doing some sick nutmegs or something like that, but it blew up and now it is a full-blown media company. They have a docu-series coming out about Kate Cunningham and a football player. I don't know who the football player is because I don't really watch football anymore. I think Cam Newton has a thing coming out. They also are selling the streaming rights to their football league and they're also selling the streaming rights to their basketball league, Overtime Elite. This company has raised over $200 million. That's a lot of scratch. What are they doing with this $200 million? We're gonna get into it. Who are the investors? Who's giving them this $200 million? Well, a lot of names that you know. Pau Gasol, Cam Newton, Jeff Bezos, the richest man in the world is in on this. Drake is in on this. Clay Thompson's in on this. There's a lot of big names in on it. Pau Gasol's on the board. Damon John is on the board from Shark Tank. This thing is going to go far just from the people they have on the board, the rich people they have on the board that can run successful companies. But what we're really talking about is what this company is doing with their new league for high school students. The objective of this is, is to replace college ball and also kind of replace high school ball and start getting kids paid early for their talents. So I really support it. What do these kids get? They get $100,000 a year. Yes, that is right. So 16 year olds can get $100,000 a year and potentially more. Not only do they get that, they get equity in overtime, which is really great because when these kids graduate, they're going to be advocates for the business and for the overtime elite league because they're gonna want the business to thrive because they have equity in the business. Very smart on overtime's part. They also get $100,000 set aside in the event that they wanna go to college. They can take that $100,000 and hopefully go to college. I would assume with $100,000 now you can go to college, but with the rising cost of education, maybe that's not true which is insane. Don't go to college. Maybe go to college, but don't go to, don't go to college. Stop going to college. Stop putting yourselves in debt. Figure it out. Do something else. Or go to college, but do it reasonably. Don't go into a lot of debt when you don't have a career. That's my advice if there are, I think there are young kids that watch this. So listen to that. Figure it out. Debt sucks. These athletes can also take college courses from the University of Pittsburgh, which is really interesting to me because the University of Pittsburgh is part of the NCAA. And you'd think being in competition with the overtime elite for student athletes, there'd be a conflict of interest, but the NCAA doesn't seem to care and Pittsburgh doesn't care either because they're getting money from both. Cool. Go Pittsburgh. A player can turn that $100,000 down and say, hey, you know what? You keep the $100,000. I may want to go to college and play ball in college. So you keep it. I want to keep my amateur status and be eligible to play college ball. I don't know why a student would do that. I think at this point you've made the decision to say, hey, I'm not going to play basketball in college. I'm just going to get paid now. I don't know why a student would do that unless they were very indecisive of whether or not they wanted to play college basketball. Basketball. There's also the education. There's actually a high school education you get being a part of the overtime elite program. They say it's four to one student to teacher ratio. They say it's really good. They say it's like a specialized curriculum for each student. I don't know. They're obviously going to speak very highly of their program. I don't know if it's good or not, but I assume it's good. They're putting a lot of money into this thing. I'm assuming these athletes are getting educated really well just from the sheer amount of money that's being put into it. Kids are also taught financial literacy. They're taught life skills, which I think is a major lacking thing from at least when I was in high school. They're taught financial literacy. They're taught social media skills, whatever that means, I don't really know. Mental wellness, that's a thing that wasn't really a thing for a very long time, especially if you're playing professional basketball. I can only imagine the mental strain that you go through, especially with the media criticism. And they're also taught advocacy in sports. So the ideologies that they support or social justice campaigns that they feel particularly passionate about, they know how to use their platform to make their voice heard. I thought this was interesting. They have opening and closing huddles so the guys will get together or women will get together and they'll talk at the beginning of the day and they'll talk at the end of the day about what they learned about what their experience was to help them develop emotional bonds with each other which I think is really cool because my favorite part about sports probably the real only thing I like about sports is the fact that people come together to do something bigger than themselves and develop emotional bonds I think that's really cool overtime elite has a brand new arena in Atlanta it is huge it is massive it has three NBA full-size courts and one like signature show court that has cool ass lighting and 1300 seats that you can sit in if you're a spectator. I'm gonna show some pictures of it. You'll see it's pretty uh, state of the art. At least it looks sleek as f 
Last year was the first year of Overtime Elite. There were 27 athletes and they were divided up into three teams. They played each other, but they also played other high school teams in the Georgia area. This year, for the next season, they've expanded to six teams. They didn't add three teams, but three high schools in Georgia have become part of the league. So in theory, one of these high school teams in Georgia could be the champion of the Overtime Elite League, which would be kind of funny if like some Christian school in Atlanta became the Overtime Elite League winner. So there been three players who have started their professional careers from the Overtime Elite League, which is pretty cool. You may not think these are a big deal, but they are. Even though none of these players were drafted, they're still playing professional basketball, which is very impressive, especially for the first season. That's 10% of these players. Some of them weren't even eligible for the draft. You got to give it up for them. So let's get into those players. We got Dominic Barlow. So Dominic Barlow signed a two-way contract with the Austin Spurs and the San Antonio Spurs. The Austin Spurs are the San Antonio Spurs development team or their G League affiliate. Go Dominic Barlow. That's pretty rad, dude. We also got Jean Montero. He signed a very short-lived 10-day contract with the New York Knicks, but still, he played professional basketball. Right now, he is a free agent. He might get picked up. Both of these guys are only 19. The next one is Emmanuel Maldonado. He is a Puerto Rican player, and currently, he is playing in Puerto Rico professionally. This month, November 2022, Amazon actually agreed to stream 20 games per season of the Overtime Elite League, which is is rad because you know Amazon pays a lot for everything. They paid a ton of money. So you know this league is going to be big because Amazon would not waste their time with it. They would not waste their time streaming it. They would not waste their time marketing it. It's going to be something big. Ultimately, I'm really excited about this league and I'm really excited to see players get the money that they are due to get the recognition that they are due and there aren't people kind of taking money from them. I think this is really cool. I also appreciate that they're being taught how to not get taken advantage of to learn the business side and really learn how to not make mistakes that people have made in the past and get taken advantage of. I think it's, I think that's, I've said cool a hundred times. I think it's rad. So thanks for being here. Appreciate it. Much love.